folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I'm doing a movie review this week, and I'm about to review a horror classic that's based on a best-selling novel from Stephen King, and it came out on November 30th, 1990. It's called Misery. It's a story about a famous novelist who winds up getting caught in a blizzard and was saved by a psychotic nurse who claims to be her number one fan who wants to have taken good care of him and was forced for him to actually rewrite a new novel in order to keep misery alive yeah and this was of course uh, the film that earned Kathy Bates an Oscar winning role as Andy Welks definitely the, the kind of role that it's hard to believe anybody would play but her and she did an awesome job in that role. Uh, James Caan definitely deserves something too because he was very good in this movie as a novelist. Um, it also had s some great actors in this movie even though uh, it's pretty much the only cast we ever had for a film like this. Could it pretty much focus on both James Caan and Kathy Bates. It's also um, has the same screenwriter that gave us The Princess Bride, a very good film from Rob Reiner, and also uh, the second film that Rob Reiner had teamed up with Stephen King to do an adaptation of, I mean the first one being Stand By Me, so that that's interesting, but it was definitely the best film to ever own, especially on this Blu-ray combo pack that I got that came out in 2010, yep, and it's also, you know, an awesome set because the DVD that's right here has extras and this is what it looks like yeah the blu-ray right here is just bare bones sadly but unfortunately it does have an awesome transfer definitely looks as pristine as it ever has been for 50 gigs uh, amount of space for the disc so that works pretty well so yeah these are the extras that's on this too as you know it. But the transfer on the DVD of course was um, simply taken from a UK master or something because I noticed the pitch was adjusted. It kind of speeded up a bit so that's what I noticed. And they, they suddenly transferred it to the DVD alone that has all the extras. Because I know MGM did release um, an early DVD that actually uh, was surprisingly actually left in the Columbia Pictures logo at the beginning. You know. Yeah, because Columbia Pictures did release this film in theaters. Yeah. Yeah, with Nelson Entertainment and and Castle Rock Entertainment as well. Yeah, that's which is Reiner's production company. But it's always been a, a great film. I, I remember watching this um when we first rented the uh the VHS tape and I remember watching this uh, on TV all the time and before I, I finally got this movie, thank goodness. I had trouble getting this film, you know, at Best Buy because, yeah, one of the discs got scratched when I first got it, but thank goodness uh, I got a replacement and it looks exactly as good as ever, so there's no problems there. Just, that's what you get for having those typical, uh, you know, Blu-ray cases that are Eagle Box. Anyway, um, let, let's get to the film. It stars James Caan, Kathy Bates, Richard Farnsworth, Francis Sternkenhan, Lauren Bacall, Graham Jarvis, Jerry Potter, Rob Reiner, and J.T. Walsh. It's written by William Goldsman, who did The Princess Bride, you know, based on the novel by Stephen King, and it's directed by Rob Reiner. The movie begins when a famous novelist, Paul Shelton, who's played by James Caan, who's the author of the most successful series of the Regency romance novels, which features a character named Misery Chastain, he wanted to focus on more serious stories by writing a manuscript for the final Misery novel. But unfortunately, he winds up traveling from Silver Creek, Colorado to his home in New York City but all of a sudden he got caught in, into a, a huge blizzard and the car goes off the road 
leaving a huge uh, car crash. He winds up getting stuck inside the, the car only to be already being unconscious. But he was rescued by a nurse named Annie Wilkes, who's played by Kathy Bates, who winds up bringing him to her remote home, which Paul, of course, regained consciousness only to find himself already, you know, shattered through his entire legs. Yeah, so, since they're all broken and, and, and already had a dislocated shoulder. Annie, of course, claims that she is his number one fan and talks a lot about him and his novels. So I guess she's considered herself lucky that she actually has a famous novelist in her home because she collects all of his books. So as a reward to saving him, Paul gives Annie a new manuscript, which you know, she has saved from the wreckage. Only one problem. This is where she gets completely psychotic. Especially when she read the novel called Misery's Child that she just bought at the store. So he figured, you know, why not? So she read the entire book until one last page during the night when she found out about that one particular tragedy. When she winds up in his room saying, You dirty bird! How could you? Misery Chastain cannot be dead! When she found out that Misery Chastain is dead. But, of course, uh, Paul had revealed that, you know, people had died during childbirth, but his spirit is alive, and that's the most important. And this is where she yells, I don't want her spirit! I want her! And you murder her! And, you know, he just said that it just slipped away. Slipped away? <laughs> I mean, she's just gone completely nuts in this movie. And you wouldn't believe it, too. So that violent rage of hers after discovering the death of misery is what causes uh, Paul to burn the manuscript the very next morning. And even worse, he even found out that she actually lied about calling the authorities to find him. So that alone is what would have Paul, you know, completely, you know, terrified having to find out what Annie's going to do next once uh, Paul writes a new manuscript for a new book called Misery's Return in order to bring back Misery Chastain. Yep, so that means... Uh, Annie's going to buy some new fresh paper. I mean, the first one, of course, had smudges on it. So then uh, she wound up getting some new fresh ones to, to actually write the entire novel for, uh, in order to keep himself alive. But that alone is going to be a lot difficult for him to deal with because you know, even when, when Annie is gone, you know, He's already, you know, trying to find better ways to escape by actually trying to call the the authorities and tell them to to help him. But unfortunately, Annie had took the the phone off the hook. In fact, he took the whole phone off, keeping just what it is. And then, and of course, he wants up to going into his wheelchair, trying to find all the secrets about Annie. Especially when he started looking at the memory book that she has that's laying around um, her desk. Yeah, a scrapbook that, that's filled with newspaper articles of hers that she collects. Yeah, even some pictures and all that other stuff. That's what leads to all these dark secrets of hers. So that's where I know something was going completely wrong. And, of course, he even had uh, a knife, a kitchen knife, to hide in inside the... Uh, his arms so that way he'll be able to protect himself to stop uh, Annie from hurting him which I know this is where it gets worse so of course you know Paul had to rewrite the entire script as we know it you know with Annie already bringing in a pig names her uh, misery also brought in a uh, a pig award too 
you know, for that alone. And and all of this, and not to mention they even did a celebration for for misery. But that's even worse when she even found out that Paul's been out. So she actually ties him up on the bed. Yeah, she even found the knife that, that he hid it inside the bed. This is where it became the most disturbing scene in movie history. Because in the novel of Misery, yeah, as we know it from Stephen King, that scene alone is where I think this wouldn't make it into the film itself because if it did, it wouldn't earn an NC-17 rating. Which I know at the time was still an X rating when this movie was still made. And you know, before it got released. So yeah, they, they because NC-17 did replace the X. Anyway, that horrified, disturbing scene was when Annie was about to actually chop off... Uh, Paul's uh, feet, and that alone would would cause a lot of blood shooting up already. But in this scene, instead of that, it's hobbing by actually putting two legs onto a wooden board and you know, hook up between two feet by taking a sledgehammer and knocking his ankles between a wooden board twice and oh boy I felt so sorry for him having to suffer from this but she did that in order for him not to escape yeah so meanwhile a local sheriff named Buster is played by Richard Farnsworth is investigating the disappearance of Paul Shelton but when a shopkeeper informs the sheriff that he has sold all the typing paper to Annie Welks, Buster wants of uh, going inside uh, Annie's house, you know, just to discover where Paul is headed. Yeah, which unfortunately, you know, Annie had uh, dropped uh, Paul in, into the the basement you know, with the wheelchair just to hit him inside, and then and then when Buster had found uh, Paul, yeah, and he actually shot him in the back, and he was killed. That alone is, is what causes him to finish the entire novel until it's finally completed. But of course, you know, Paul has a matter of his own hands by actually uh, taking the script that's already been finished and actually uh, putting some liquid fluid, yeah, using the match and light it up right in front of Annie and then after that you know Paul actually brings in the typewriter and knocks her down causing in a huge fight and this is where <laughs> this, this is where he takes the the paper that's already burning up and, and tells him you want it? you want it? chew to you choke you sick twisted fuck and of course, Annie kicks him in the nuts, though. <laughs> Paul tries to stop Annie completely and actually knocks uh, Annie by using the, the pig statue. Yeah, the award that uh, she received. And knocks her completely, and she's finally dead. So then, 18 months later, Paul is now walking in a cane, you know, already meeting his publishing agent, Marshall, who's played by. Lauren Bacall in a restaurant in New York City where they discussed about a new novel that has nothing to do with misery so this time he's writing a novel about himself which of course after having to experience the, what happened over there he just wanted to write something that's more special so of course this is where the waitress came by even though he was already imagined that Annie had uh, had dressed up as the waitress, probably fretting to, to kill him once more. But I know it wasn't her. It turned out to be just a local waitress telling him that he is his, his number one fan. And at the end he just says, that's very sweet of you. Already feeling uncomfortable at the end. 
So yeah, it, it's a very thrilling uh, horror film that was made by Rob Reiner that's based on a novel by Stephen King, as we know it. And I gotta say, this this movie is as chilling as ever. It's definitely what, what made it up for it. Kathy Bates, of course, definitely earned her Oscar-winning performance as Annie Wilkes. I mean, this is the kind of character that you can deal with, even though she is, of course, psychotic. I mean, she's as crazy as a fucking nut. I mean, apparently, you do feel sorry for her at first, because she is the kind of girl who would actually take good care of, of Paul in, in case if something happens. Yeah, plus because you wanted to keep him alive. But it's just sad that, because, yeah, having to deal with all of this just leads to, you know, bigger problems. But, of course, you definitely feel sorry for Paul Sheldon being, you know, tied up and being stuck with um, Annie for the rest of his life. Definitely going to be uh, scarred for life as we know it. But, yes, uh, James Conn did a good job playing this role of, Paul Sheldon, definitely the, the role he deserved, something you never thought you, you would expect from him, because he usually plays, you know, different roles in movies, but this was perfect, um, and it, it also has a great cast, too, including Richard Farnsworth, Francis Sternkahan, you know, plays, uh, you know, uh, Buster's wife, yeah, Lauren Bacall, who, who's a, a very fine actress, you know, happens to be the wife of Humphrey Bogarts, because they've been in movies together. You know, she she was indeed a fine good actress, and she did a good job here. You know, playing his uh, publishing agent. Um, yeah, Rob Reiner had a cameo role as the helicopter pilot, and he even had a state trooper, um, who played by the late great J T. Walsh. So, a lot of great actors. Um, I love the cinematography that's done by uh, Barry Sonnefeld, you know, who happens to be the cinematographer of films like Three O'Clock High and the movie that came out the same year, which is a Corn Brothers film, Miller's Crossing. I mean, everything that was beautifully shot is definitely what uh, Barry Sonnefeld had in mind. I mean, everything from the looks of the mountains to... Um, to Annie's house, to all the other good scenes, following the investigation and everything, it's just beautifully shot. I mean, definitely. Also have a wonderful score by Mark Sherman, who also does the music for Castle Rock Entertainment logo, and and all of that. Um, it was a wonderful score for the film. It definitely has some chills uh, up your spine, having to deal with what's going to happen. Yeah, everything. It, I mean, out of a 20 million budget, this this movie works. And it made more money at the box office, and I'm glad it did. Uh, out of 61.3 million, this was worth it. So, yes, it had some wonderful good scenes all the way around. I mean, you know exactly what's going to happen next to Paul, you know, who's already trying to stop uh, Annie from doing this was, of course, one of the best uh, Stephen King adaptations that we had to offer. I mean, it came out in the same year that another film, which was a miniseries, had came out. So this was before this movie. So I knew we were getting a lot of Stephen King adaptations of all time. Because I know this was also the year where we had movies like The Graveyard Shift. And it even had a segment in the movie, Tales from the Dark Side of the Movie. So that's also interesting, because I guess... This was a pretty big year for Stephen King, as we know it. So, yeah. But definitely check out Misery. It's a, it's a very good film. It's very chilling, and you just can't go wrong with it. So anyway, I give Misery five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.